Welcome everyone to Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorney's YouTube page. My name is Kelly Yazdi and I have the absolute pleasure of getting to interview my friend Narissa Cerny here with us today. Narissa, thanks for joining. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. Me too. And for those of you tuning in, Narissa has been at Harley Davidson for almost 10 years as an engineer. She's a systems engineer focused on engine calibrations and emissions. And she was previously a design engineer for Harley on the powertrain team that helped deliver the Milwaukee 8 engine. She's also extremely passionate about mentoring and volunteering to encourage females in motorcycling and STEM fields. In 2019, she founded the Iron Angels, an all-female high school team in Milwaukee that rebuilds a street bike into a flat track bike over the course of six months and then competes against other high school teams. Narissa, you are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I just like to have fun. I don't know. <laughs> yes, a mix, of, a mix of fun, combining passions and all of it being motorcycles, which we love. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, I got kind of a start in motorcycles from a young age to a, a certain point, I guess. Um, my, my dad mm -hmm. always had a bike when I was growing up and I used to ride on the back with him, but uh, it wasn't really a big piece of my life beyond that until after I graduated from college mm. um basically I went off got my engineering degree I, I went into engineering because I thought I wanted to work on race cars actually oh, wow. um and and maybe part of me still does someday <laughs> but um yeah I just I love power sports anything that goes fast and um graduated from school decided I needed a new hobby went off and got my my um rider's training certificate and it just kind of blew up from there so mm -hmm. uh, it quickly became my job and my passion <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's amazing and so you grew up in uh Wisconsin right correct so I mean I imagine being in Wisconsin you you grew up in all kinds of power sports or at least seeing them around right I mean Harley Davidson right in your backyard let alone I mean snowmobiling and all kinds of basically anything that takes you fast <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you're totally right. It's it's everywhere around there, especially with the winters being so long. Snowmobiling is really big. Um, my dad always had some type of like quad or oh, he had this crazy three wheeler. I remember we used to take out on the frozen rivers around our house in the winter time. That was so much fun. So um, yeah, it's it's hard to just like not be exposed to that. And there's a lot of really great race tracks around Wisconsin, both large scale like Road America. Many people are familiar with that track. Um, mm -hmm. I've spent a lot of time at Road America seeing, you know, big name races, but also a lot of small grassroots types of places too. So it's it's kind of everywhere. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's it's the good old Midwest way of life, right? I mean, even for me growing up in Minnesota, I I it's amazing how often that like I when I go back home, I'm realize wow, power sports and motorcycling was Sturgis right there, like in your backyard, right? And yeah. South Dakota was like really always around. And then, you know, some of us have turned that passion into a career like you. And I would just love to just know how how did you get into engineering with Harley Davidson? I mean, how did that even transpire? <laughs> So, uh, like I mentioned, I, I decided that I wanted to go to school for engineering when I was in high school, um, primarily fueled by race cars and all things power sports. So, um, went off, got my mechanical engineering degree, and actually my first job out of college was for a company that makes boat engines. Hmm. But through the various projects that I did while I was in college and that first job, um, I realized that I specifically wanted to focus my career on internal combustion engine development. Um, it was just something about working with engines that really sparked something in me, pun intended. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I'm loving <laughs> I mean, I, I'm a nerd. What can I say? Um, so yeah they just engines are so cool to me because there are so many facets of engineering fundamentals that come into play and obviously engines are all around us and um you know as much as like the the ev scene is increasing these days we still have a lot of traditional ic engines and we're just working to make them better more efficient etc so there's there's continuous engineering challenges around these products um and then, of course, they make things go fast, which is pretty cool, like in race cars and motorcycles. And so. <laughs> so, 
Um, yeah, I was, I was at that first job for a few years. I was actually volunteering with a couple of professional race teams at the time that were nearby as well, kind of dipping my toe into that. And um, basically just decided that I didn't necessarily want to work track side. Like I had originally thought when I was young, I was um, finding that my skill set and my passions were more better suited towards like a traditional development engineering type um, mm. environment. So um, I had already gotten my motorcycle license at that point, And I was just wanting to switch my career path a little bit, try something different and apply to Harley Davidson. Ended up getting a job in the powertrain design team. So like you mentioned, there, there are actually pieces on the Milwaukee 8 engine that are mine. Uh, I can actually point to motorcycles and say that I did that, you know, from, from nap napkin sketch to production, which is pretty cool. That's so um, cool. Yeah. So um, like I said, I rode before I started there, but I would say that my passion blew up tenfold once I started working there full time because you know, almost everybody I worked with also rode was also deep into the culture and the community. And it's just, it's hard to not get the bug when you're around all of that. Um, mm -hmm. But, I, you know, and also working in engine development and just like the, the general Hurley engineering development organization, I get to see a lot more of the product and I became so intimate with it and then just really fell in love with, um, you know, what the bikes had to offer. So, um, it's just, it's, it's really propelled my passion since then and, mm -hmm. um, taking me to some pretty cool places. For so many people who are tuning in, especially women, I mean, to hear your story of diving into being an engineer at Harley Davidson and you went from being, um, a design engineer, right. Yes. To a systems engineer. Yeah. I mean, how did, how did that transition happen? Uh, so when I was a design engineer, uh, I, I really enjoyed that role because I got to see so many different facets of the company. Um, you know, as a design engineer in general, you you have to make sure that your designs are satisfying all the needs of all the stakeholders, right? So you have to interact with the service team, the manufacturing teams, the design team. Mm. Um, you have to manage the finances for the design of your part, making sure that you don't design something that's super expensive or or too difficult to manufacture or whatever it might be, right? Um, so I got this really, really wide breadth of knowledge and experience in that role, but, um, a design engineer role is a lot of engineering mixed with a lot of project management. And I wanted to get back more into the technical side of things and just be like a true technical engineer. So mm -hmm. that's when I moved more into the system side of things and, uh, moved into the engine calibration team. So, um, with that. We, our, our deliverable is not necessarily a physical part as it would be with a design engineer role. As a calibration engineer, my deliverable to the product is actually software. So mm. um, it's, yeah, it, it's a bit more technical in that sense. And it's just um, a little bit more closely focused on like the internal combustion engine development, like more on the performance side of things, as opposed to like the physical components of it. Was this transition, um, you know, from one area into another, the reason why you moved from Milwaukee <laughs> down to warmer weather? <laughs> <laughs> to Phoenix, yes. Um, not necessarily. So I had actually moved into the calibration team a few years before I moved here to Phoenix. Um, Harley is just opening or, or has opened up uh, another satellite engineering development facility, um, they chose to do it in Phoenix. So there are just a handful of us engineers that are down here now. And they essentially were looking for somebody to fill the role that I was already filling in Milwaukee. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I saw it, I talked to my boss and I said, Hey, I'm kind of sick of shoveling snow. So I'll go down to <laughs> Phoenix and, <laughs> and, and it all worked out. Um, so yeah, it, basically I'm, I'm doing the same thing I'm doing just in sunnier weather. <laughs> yes. You've had so much experience at Harley Davidson being engineer, and I'm sure that combined with just other things in your life, it's really fueled your passion for mentoring and volunteering, as I mentioned previously. And I'd love to hear more about Iron Angels. Can you Absolutely. tell us more about that? Yeah. So uh, you absolutely hit the nail on the head. Uh, I, I really enjoy volunteering and mentoring, especially 
not only in motorcycling, but in engineering, females are a minority, right? We all know that. And I think it's very important for us to stick together and for women in, in my position as an example to kind of, you know, show that there is opportunity and that this is possible to the younger generations. So um, one of the, the biggest projects that I was part of when I was back in Milwaukee was the Build Moto program. So Build Moto mm -hmm. is a nonprofit organization in Milwaukee. It's been operating for over 10 years. And uh, basically the premise of the program is to bring adult mentors in the motorcycle community together with high school students and teach these high school students how to rebuild motorcycles and uh, teach them like basic project management or business skills along the way. So it's actually a competition. Uh, every mm. team gets a bike in January and they have six months to completely redesign it and rebuild it and turn it into a flat track race bike. And the, the season finale is always the actual race. So we do put them on the track and race against each other, but there's milestones along the way. Um, every team has to submit certain pieces of, of progress or documentation. You know, they have to raise a certain amount of money for sponsors. And um, there's like a dyno day where we have to show that our, our bike is in, got the highest horsepower, for example. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we get scored points along, all along that way. But um, anyways, back in 2019, I joined the program because I was looking for something to to volunteer my time with and mm. um decided this was it but there was not an all-female team and i felt like that was an opportunity just you know being in the role that i was in so myself and a few other women from harley as well as some other women in the milwaukee motorcycle community came together and uh, formed the first team so every year is a, a new group of girls and um every year we build a new bike and we've done really, really well so far. And it's it's something that I'm most proud of in all of my accomplishments because I think we've just we've touched so many young girls' lives in in not only mechanical skills and learning more about motorcycles, but also in their self confidence and you know helping them set their path for the rest of their lives. That's so incredible, and I just I really like tip my hat off to you because I feel like it's you know it's it's one thing to have that passion in our own life, but to share that stoke and fuel that flame for the younger generation and other riders and potentially future riders. I think that's such an incredible thing that you've done. Thank you. It, it's sometimes I feel like it's actually a little bit selfish maybe because <laughs> I find it so rewarding personally. I love doing it just for the the reactions that I get from the people that I'm mentoring or like seeing their progression, seeing the self-confidence grow, like that's what fuels me. Um, so it, it's great that I do have this opportunity to, to kind of like pass along the torch, right? I had a lot of mentors when I was coming up as a, a young college student and even the first few years of my career. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it feels awesome to like take that opportunity and pass it along. I just think that's so cool, Narissa. Seriously, are you? I are you um, thinking about potentially continuing a program like that, maybe in Arizona? I would love to. I would love to. Um, you know, one thing that I realized about myself going through that program was that I actually am very passionate about teaching, um, mm. especially teaching people who maybe come from a background that. Uh, they haven't had these types of experiences before and maybe they feel a little bit disadvantaged in some way because I, I remember that like when I was in college I was I was one of six girls in a class of 200 and I remember sitting in class and there are so many times where I kept thinking you know, like wow all of my my friends and my classmates they all grew up wrenching on stuff in the garage with their dads and, and I don't know any of this I just feel so behind and, and I hated that. And it just, it, it took like that extra motivation to kind of get over that mountain, get over that, mm -hmm. that blockade. So um, I, I think I have a lot of empathy for people in those situations. And, and I just, I love to like expand on that and, and help those people gain that confidence. So yeah. I would love to continue something like that similarly here in Phoenix. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll say that it's a maybe. Um, mm -hmm. It's a lot of work obviously, but, um, yeah, I'm not counting it out. So we'll see. 
life has been a little bit crazy lately, but maybe soon. <laughs> I'd love to ask you, Narissa, with, with your years of experience in the motorcycle industry and being a rider, I mean, do you have any tips or words of encouragement for someone who may be interested in getting into motorcycle engineering or just getting involved in motorcycles in general? Absolutely. Um, first tip so is, <laughs> I know there's so many. Um, <clears throat> the first tip is just do it. Easy as that. Do it. If you have any interest in it, uh, don't let anybody, you know, extinguish your flame. Don't let anybody mm -hmm. tell you you can't. You absolutely can. Totally. And, um, you know, you, there's likely to be challenges along the way. But keeping a positive mindset where you approach challenges as opportunities for growth and improvement is really the the most positive way to continue to progress and to take all those baby steps towards meeting the final goal. Um, I think it's really beneficial to reach out and find a community and even better yet, find mentors, people who have achieved the things that you are trying to achieve. Sometimes it just helps to have somebody along with you, like along the way saying, you know, I recommend this or go talk to this person and research this, et cetera. Um, you know, that goes for engineering and motorcycling. You know, the, there's, there's so many, for example, like with women, there's so many women's mm -hmm. riding groups out there nowadays. And I think just having that camaraderie is a great way to start building your confidence as a newer rider. So true. Those are really great words of wisdom and advice. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> No, thank you. And with this being, you know, our interview with Russ from motorcycle attorneys who are there for riders on the road and any riders that have been in motorcycle accidents, I'd love to ask, have you ever been in an accident or, you know, maybe seen or experienced one? And if so, what did you learn from it? Thankfully, knock on wood, I have not been in an accident myself. Um, I have crashed a few motorcycles, but never on the street. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> usually in the dirt or on a racetrack or you know more controlled situations right. thankfully mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um I have a few friends who have been in accidents and it's it's often a scary situation right it's something mm -hmm. that as a rider none of us ever want to experience and we never want our friends to experience it but I have heard that having a solid team of attorneys behind you can make all the difference in the aftermath so, um, you know, if there's anything that I have learned from them, it's to make sure that I have a phone number on hand and I start teaming up with somebody who, who really knows how to handle the situation and can coach you through, you know, controlling the accident scene and what the next steps are, all of that. Cause I think it can be very confusing for some people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like through these experiences, right, as motorcyclists, I mean, we learn from them, whether it's something we've experienced ourselves or whether it's our friends experience them. And through this community that is growing, it's it's really an incredible resource to tap into to not only learn more and have people around you, but also become a better rider, become a safer rider, right? And apply that wisdom to whenever you decide to get on the bike to go somewhere. Yes, I completely agree. I think it's so important to just be a continual student, you know, mm -hmm. whether that is in your writing technique, whether that's in the gear that you wear, or whether it's in the resources that you have at your fingertips. It's mm -hmm. always good to keep learning. Yes, forever students, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So tell me, Narissa, are there any events or any things coming up this year that you're excited that you're going to be participating in or, or doing or, you know, traveling to that involve motorcycles? So in July, I'll be riding up to the Sturgis area and attending the Babes Ride Out in the Black Hills this year. Um, I'm riding up there with a couple of my close girlfriends. I'm really excited about that. It's It's been a little while since I've done a road trip, so definitely looking forward to getting on the road with them. Um, every year in October is the Sin City Moto Girls camp out near Vegas. And I definitely plan on going to that again this year. That's one of my Fun. favorite camp outs. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. And other than that, I just, I like to go to bike nights and other small events around Phoenix. You know, I've only been here about a year and a half. So um, still kind of just like dipping my toe into the scene here and meeting new people, mm -hmm. having fun that way. 
I love that. And if, if anyone who's watching this is interested in getting in touch with you or learning more about Iron Angels, um, is there a social media platform or a website that they can go to to learn more? Absolutely. So um, personally, I, I use Instagram quite a bit. So Nerissa underscore nonstop is where you can find me. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a lot of random things that I post there sometimes, but um, it's just, you know, little snippets of my life. That's always fun. And if, with the Iron Angels, um, even though I have moved from Phoenix, there are women who have taken over the team and continued it, which I'm very grateful for. And they can be found at the Iron Angels on Instagram. And um, I believe they have a website up and running this year as well. So um, that might be ironangelsbuild.com. I'd have to double check that. But um, again, social media, Instagram is the best place to find them. All right. Nerissa Cerny, everyone. <laughs> Nerissa, thanks again.